Welcome everybody to Smell It Sunday here on Aromatically Speaking, my secondary channel. And the music always has to get super intense when I start talking. Let's get rid of the music. Today we have something that uh, I've actually had in my possession for a long time. It's a package, it's a box filled with goodies of uh, the candle persuasion. I don't know if that's the correct way to say that, but um, I figured we would do another unboxing and see what's inside, because I have no idea. I have no idea what's inside. I know there's candles but I do not know uh, of what sort. Uh, but uh, the candle company is, uh, uh, the proprietor is a dear friend of mine and of ours from the candle enthusiast community, Leslie Pethy Bridge. And she has her very own candle company, Silver Moon Candle Company to be more specific. And I have, uh, like I said, this box. So let's jump right into it. We're going live so I can see your guys' comments. But I am going to move through this quickly. So I'm not going to be able to catch everything that you guys are saying. So talk amongst yourselves. And uh, we will be having an after show. Uh, at the conclusion of this video, we will have another live stream where we have tons of other uh, fun treats. Uh, to do, including more uh, mail unboxings, more candles, Yankee Candle archives, uh, even some some candy and hot sauce taste testing. So it, it should be a fun after show, but let's jump into this unboxing, shall we? I want to welcome everyone into the chat area. I see all you folks. I have you pulled up already. And uh, let's do this. All right. Of course, it's underneath all of the other boxes. I'm glad I planned this out just right. Here it is. Wow, it's, it's, it's not an incredibly large box, but it is incredibly heavy. So let me move this out of the way. All right. And you're asking, do I have coffee? Of course I have coffee. I need coffee. Um, always need coffee for these evaluations. We have our Freddy Krueger Never Sleep Again mug for the Halloween season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little Stumptown coffee in that, in that mug right there. All right, and let's do this. All right, so we're gonna slice her open. Now, uh, Leslie, I'm not sure what, how long she's been making candles. Has it been two years? I think it's been about two years. And when she was first getting started, she sent me a bunch of uh, candles that she was working on. And I'm telling you, um, I never really had a chance to fully evaluate them or talk to, talk to you guys about them on on any of my channels, but uh, I burned them all. Um, and in fact, I still have a little bit, I think, of her Bella Lugosi candle uh, on my shelf behind me, or my hutch. So look at this. I was just talking about this stuff. I was talking about, uh, I was having a Christmas tree conversation and mentioning how much I love tinsel. Um, but I, you know, it's, there's the tinsel that comes in the, the strands or the garland, and then there's this stuff. My father would never let me use this because it would make a mess. But this is my favorite kind of tinsel. So I might even just save that. It's a nice pretty purple for Halloween. That's not going, oh wow, look at this. Can you see this already? I don't want to break anything, but look at what these are wrapped in. This really does look like we just kind of opened up a trunk of, uh, you know, uh, a trunk, a really old uh, wooden uh, vessel that's been stored in a witch's tower, right? Kind of looks like, 
So I kind of I'm getting the vibe of that or like some cobwebs. I like that wrapping a lot. Dig it. Woo! Business cards. Thank you very much for that. Wow, there is a lot of candles in here. So uh, we, I will show you all of these candles, but because my evaluations take so long, I'm gonna have to keep some of these short because my, my live streams are becoming way too long. And uh, although I love going on these merit, what in God's name? All right, I wanna make sure everything's out of the box. Although I love going on these marathons of lives, I don't want to be putting out two hour long videos. So we have some uh, postcards and some information on um, the candles. Check that out. We have some fairies, handcrafted paraffin soy blended candles. More information on the box. I will link up all of this info in the description below. And just real quick, we have postcards as well. Can we get a focus on there? Oh yeah. Double sided baby, you gotta love that. All right, and then this I wanna check out for, we have a card. Let's see if I can read this live. But let's look at this first. Well, now let's open the card. Let's be polite. Happy Halloween, Shane. Enjoy. Devil's Tree Candle is from last year. Let me pull you guys up. Keep, oh, Leslie is in the house. Uh, I'm glad she is because I did not give her a heads up. And. And thank I've seen a lot of nice words. Thank you everyone for the well wishes. Let's read this. Dear Shane, thank you for all that you do in the candle community. I've given you a few of these candles, or I've given you this year's candles for you to share and enjoy, including is the following. Twisted, Shadow People, Jack the Ripper, Coffee Candle, Serenade of Death, Once Bitten, Fairies at Play, and Devil's Tree, and Melts of Werewolf, The Raven, Witches, f f is it familiar? Witches Familiar? Correct me if I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Oh, and look at this. We have a special sales code. I don't know if this, is, Leslie, let us know if this is still valid because I've had this box for about a week and a half, uh, but Leslie has at least offered us a 20% off exclusive uh, promo code. Uh, if that is still uh, something that you can do, Leslie, we fully understand if you cannot because it's so late in the season. I will post this promo code. It's going to be in the description below, so check that out. And she's, she's saying that it is. And then, so let me put in this promo code. So everyone swing over to Leslie's, Leslie's Etsy page. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. It's going to be etsy.com backslash shop backslash silver moon candle co. Uh, and switch this out so we can see it. Um, here it is. Here's our Etsy page. Everything that's still in stock, still available. Uh, so definitely swing over. Right here, I'm highlighting that with the cursor, but what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to 
pop that right there. So you guys have the direct link to Leslie's page. Again, for you guys watching this later, it'll be in the description below. Let's get to it. Is anybody new to this channel, aromatically speaking? If you are, or if you're just one of those who lurks in the background and doesn't like to chat, well, come forth and chat. But more importantly, not more importantly, but make sure you subscribe because we're really trying hard to get this channel above a thousand subscribers. We've been doing it for a while. We've been trying to get this thing over a thousand subscribers. This is my live channel. And uh, I always say that it's, it was always this intimate little kind of secret uh, w that we had so we could hang out, but we need a thousand subscribers. Wow, we have yet another candle. I'll put that one to the side and then we have the milk cups, but this box is so great. Did you guys see, did I show you this? So the milk cups, uh, very generous size samples. Spells, potions, and creepy concoctions. This is a nice, nice little token. You know, this is, you know, I put, like to put like matches and things in here. So I, you can, and I, it looks like a real book. That's a nice little touch. I love it. Let's get to it. Candle number one. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. All right. And again, we have this. The tinsel is, is, is messing up my, uh, my cursor. Hold on a second. Okay. So um, let's do this. Let's see if I can do this. It's a little drawstring, pull string. You know, it's like, this is, look at this. And you know what? You couldn't even use this stuff to decorate your candle display after you remove it. Don't catch it on fire, but you could totally like use this because this is like that, um, you know, cheesecloth kind of material. So you can drape that along your base. Again, be careful, Oop, hit the mic. Oh, and uh, what a way to start. We have the coffee candle. Now, uh, for those of you who just happen to uh, not know this about me, I am a, a self-proclaimed coffee enthusiast, aficionado. I love my coffee. And because, you know, uh, candles is, of course, a passion of mine, I'm always looking for new and interesting takes on Halloween, or uh, excuse me, coffee candles. So let's, let's give this one a sniff. Silver Moon Candy Company, Candle Company, I said Candy Company, Candle Company Bakery Collection. Yeah, so right off the bat, that has the note that I really like in coffee candles. So I am a coffee purist. I drink my coffee black. Um, I don't frown uh, for those who like, you know, espresso milk beverages, or if you put cream or uh, flavored flavored uh, creamers and stuff like that in your coffee, sugar, things of that nature. I'm not a snob like that, but I like my coffee black. And this is this is really nice. I'll tell you why because this not only just smells like a cup of coffee. I would even venture to say this is more of that, that, that smell of coffee brewing in the kitchen. Now, how many people do you know? Maybe you're one of these people who say they don't like coffee, but they love the smell of coffee in the morning. Folgers in your cup, baby. Um, and that's that's what this is. So if you if, even if you're not a coffee drinker, this is something that you might enjoy because this is this is like uh, freshly roasted coffee beans. 
that has notes of, you know, nice sweet caramel. Not on the darker espresso roast side, so not a lot of cocoa aromas. More of the caramel uh, and, and nutty notes that we see in a medium roasted coffee. Oh, that's, it really does smell good. And oh my, how did I not notice this? I knew this, but I had forgotten. Look at the surface of this. That is freshly, well, I don't know if it's freshly. It shouldn't be freshly because this candle is probably not made <laughs> within uh, a week or so. But that is coffee grounds, uh, or I shouldn't say grounds, but uh, 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 ground uh, uh, coffee beans on top of there. That is so interesting. You know, I wonder how that will uh, come into play when actually burning this candle. Because you've got to believe that that coffee is going to become very fragrant once it's sitting in that hot wax. Uh, so if you do put creamer and flavor uh, uh, flavorings and stuff like that in your coffee, this is still, I think, definitely going to work because those caramel notes that we pick up on coffee beans, they're sweet enough, they're delicious enough. This is something that I truly believe that uh, is family friendly. Uh, the kids will love this one. The adults will love this one. I really don't think anyone... Um, uh, will be put off by a candle like this. And that's really good because um, we all have, or maybe at some point, have family members or roommates who are not as big of fans of candles as we are. So we're always looking for candles that, um, you know, are people pleasers. And that coffee candle is a people pleaser. I can't wait to burn that one. Thank you so much for that, Leslie. Um, uh, that will probably be something I will be burning very soon. And maybe I'll break it out again and do kind of a, a compare and contrast with other coffee candles that I have in my collection. All right, so we're getting into the Halloween candles here. We have Jack the Ripper. Now, I really want to do a good job with getting these in focus. Um... This camera doesn't like to do extreme close-ups. So we have uh, that the ghoulish figure. Beautiful label. Jack the Ripper. I can't read it because it's flipped on my screen. <laughs> Halloween collection. Uh, nice bloody colored wax. Let's give this a sniff. Now, I haven't read the fragrance notes to any of these. So, cut me a break. <laughs> yeah, so first thing coming through is a uh, masculine muskiness. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, don't think that this is a cologne-driven candle. That's become like, bad, like a bad thing. People are like, oh, it's too cologne, it's too cologne. No, what I mean by cologne is there's a muskiness here. We have a sense of... Jack is around us. He's somewhere. We can smell his, uh, the cologne or the s smell the, the soft wool of his black trench coat. And it's on the floral side of muskiness, not so much herbal. And I'm going to venture to guess that there is, is there some form of red fruit here? Berries? Not much. And then there's a, a very warm amber note uh, to this candle as well. And we've talked about amber enough. Uh, it's a complicated topic, but think about that uh, a really rich, clean soap. And when I use that word thick, I mean it. 
a thick or warm scent. It provokes a warmth uh, just by smelling it. Just like when we smell something mentholated, it kind of makes us feel like it's cold or chilly, where uh, the, 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 these warmer notes make us feel um, uh, uh, warm. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, my brain is trying to do three things at once. And then is there like, um, I don't, I don't want to be guessing. Um, I mean, I am guessing, but I don't want to be like trying to predict what's in this. I, I, I'm assuming that there's something like a, a sandalwood or some form of wood base note. Probably not something like cedar, not something like firewood, which might make us think of... Uh, you know, like, like a fireplace. This is more of like an elegant, almost luxuri luxurious type of wood. And that's kind of what sandalwood does. It's a, it's a clean, fresh timber. So, um, overall, to me, this is... Um, you know, with the keeping in mind the concept, Jack the Ripper, it uh, it does bring me to uh, this. Uh, you know, it's to me it is the smell of the man itself. You know, and um, and that's interesting. So it's not like we're in uh, uh, an alleyway in London, cobblestone streets. It puts me there, but to me this is much more of a smell of uh the 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 i wish i had a nickname for him what's a good nickname for jack the ripper i guess it's just jack the ripper but um it's more of the, the to me that the smell of the man himself again because of the clone that soft uh wool or laundry uh aroma the amber and uh perhaps a little bit of fruit there to brighten things up uh please uh seek out uh, Leslie's Etsy page to get the full fragrance notes if she has them available. Very good way to start this. I like that a lot. I have a feeling a lot of women will really like that candle. I just find that I don't know. I, I try. I, I, I've stopped saying this because it, it comes off as a sexist comment, but I find that a lot of women um, gravitate more towards the cologne uh, scented candles um, and to me that makes sense it's not it's not the right time to have that conversation uh, where the men I think naturally gravitate now I'm generalizing here but gravitate towards more of the food uh, fragrances that's just based on my own research asking people questions. Who knows if I'm right. Shadow people. Now, I'm going to do my best here. We have, you know, that, that haunted mansion, that sitting room. We have a shadow cast on the wall there. This nice Victorian chair. We have the chandelier. This reminds me, right off the bat, of uh, the original haunting, not not the Catherine Zeta Jones version, the original nineteen. The I don't know what year it was, but early nineteen sixties. Shadow people, P a part of the paranormal collection. Let's give it a sniff. And again, if anyone's just joining in, welcome everyone. Uh, let me know. Someone type in in caps, yes, if I am lagging at all. Oh, man, this is a nice one. I'm telling you, um, I was almost embarrassed to my last unboxing with Washington Wicks, Nikki, because I smelled her candles, and I was just more encapsulated by this the the where the candles were taking me and the concepts more than me trying to try to figure out well what's make wh what are the pieces of this candle that's creating this this aroma the sum of its parts 
And I have to say, um, this candle right here, Leslie, same, same sort of concept. This just puts me in the, the setting that you want me to go in. I'm in that sitting room in this old Victorian, you know, mansion or home or castle. Uh, I am lagging. Uh, someone says, so let me try to fix that. And uh, there's some resin notes here. Excuse me while I try to do this. I have way too many things opened right now. And I'm fearing that's what's making me lag. <sighs> you got me stumped. I'm going to say frankincense. I'm going to say frankincense because I get... Uh, frankincense is a resin that is citrusy, but also has the aroma of fresh, bright cut timber wood. I am getting a citrusy note, a bright note, and I am getting that wooden note. There are some floral notes that may be coming from yet another resinous component in this candle. But I can't say for sure. What I can say is that this is really pretty. This is not a dingy, dirty, old, haunted house. This is not creaky floor. Well, creaky floorboards is, is okay, but I don't mean like broken floorboards and mildewy furniture, right? You know, uh, that's that's a haunted house or a, like a, a, a decrepit haunted house candle where this is a much more pretty, luxurious. This is a kind of haunted house. This is like a bed and breakfast that you go to and you get to your room and then you find out on a Yelp review that it's a haunted house and there's someone was murdered in uh, your <laughs> the room that you're staying in uh, it's you know the it provokes the the idea of beautiful well-kept furniture linens uh, probably uh, because there's that floral note really fragrant florals by the window a little bit of some herbal notes. I'm really having a difficult time with this one. I won't lie. Is there bergamot? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to jump to that conclusion. But uh, definitely a musky, clean, more of a feminine approach, if you ask me, because of the brightness of the citrus than the, the Jack the Ripper. But either way, that is a pretty, pretty candle. Um, I still see that I'm lagging. So let me try to fix this real quick. And we'll continue on. Let's see if that helps. Okay, very good. So, um, two for two well three for three but two for two for talking about the halloween candles shadow people now what's the story behind shadow people is that just a a cool name or is there is there something specific is there a myth behind something that's referred to as shadow people that i'm not aware of let's keep this going I'm still lagging. And Leslie's saying Jack the Ripper was evening iris, suede leather, black agarwood, and patchouli. Well, excellent job with the patchouli. Because, I mean, this is a testament that um, when used properly, 
it it's just adds to the 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 nuances I really I, you could have given me another half hour with this candle I don't I don't think I would have th thought of patchouli but now that she mentions it I definitely see it uh, and the leather I'm hoping the leather and the suede is that musk that I was getting at okay and then I'm getting I'm jumping getting ahead of myself here uh, we have woo woo come on come on serenade of death love this label look at that violin a Stradivarius some white roses a candle and a skull that's like encrusted with Celtic designs and jewels. Very Edgar Allan Poe. Oh man, you guys are killing me with these candles. That is really nice. Okay. to me, come to me, come to me. Uh, you really, you guys are really getting me stumped. I mean, this is, um, these are coming across more like something I, I would never say that I am good at is uh, evaluating uh, colognes and perfumes um, these ingredients are very foreign to me sometimes and although I'm not trying to say that these are uh, cologne perfume heavy candles they're constructed in that way which I commend Leslie for this is a sweeter floral a citrus Zesty top note, very um, uh, not 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 a musky flower, and not a pungent flower. You know, pungent like gonna hurt my head here. And again, there's a fruitiness, but I'm, tr I'm trying so hard not to be persuaded by the, by the color of that wax. And this actually does some kind of remind me of the smell of, of a, a, a cologne or a perfume that I've smelled in the past. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, my, let's say, like, let me just jump to some conclusions here. Meyer lemon, um, rosemary or pine? And is there any, like, fresh ginger? Not like ground ginger, not like pumpkin spice, but fresh ginger. That is a really nice that is a really nice candle but man I am I am I'm gonna beat myself up for this one um, I do not feel like I am doing my best here um, whoa 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 oh no it's I'm looking at the wrong notes I saw ginger but that was another candle um, Serenade Death has orange, blood orange, golden honey, jasmine, magnolia, cognac, and suede. Definitely, definitely orange now that you're saying it. Okay, so I was getting that zestiness, but now I'm like getting that juiciness of the blood orange. And the florals, yes, the softer, sweeter florals, cognac and suede. So there is, 
a little bit of that muskiness. And the cognac. Yeah, you know, I can definitely see that. I mean, obviously, if you're telling me that's what it is, but I can definitely see that, that kind of sweet brandy-esque uh, beverage without the booze. Um, kind of like Edgar Allan Poe sitting down at his desk uh, to write creepy tales of the supernatural. I like it. I really do. Serenade of Death. These uh, are not so far easy for me to pick apart. Guys, I'm going to try something real quick. Hang in tight. I'm going to disconnect from my Wi-Fi and then reconnect. Let's see if that becomes any better. I'm hoping it does. All right. We're doing pretty good here. We're doing pretty good here. Next candle. Once bitten. Let's get that. We have... A caged vampiress. Or maybe she's not caged. She's standing outside the castle gates. Maybe she's trying to get in. Maybe she's trying to get out. Either way, uh, she has uh, certainly uh, been doing some drinking. A little bit of blood. And so a blood-themed candle. Um, and I like the color. I don't know if that's going to read right, but this is kind of like a, almost like a, a cherry red instead of a blood red, which makes it seem a little bit more refreshing, beverage-like. Let's give it a smell. Oh, yeah. So I'm glad I said cherry because I actually get cherry. A really nice. I'm trying to think of a good descriptor for that kind of cherry. Like a cherry candy. Uh, I'm not going to say this is like a fresh cherry, but this is like a... Uh, a, a candy cherry, a uh, candy cherry, or even cherry juice. Never had cherry juice before, um, or a brandied cherry. So concentrated is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, concentrated flavors and aromas, but it has uh, a really nice contrast of a musky rose. So we have this beautiful, elegant, luxurious musky rose contrasted by this juicy concentrated fruity jammy even i don't want to say jammy uh but potent cherry aroma i like this i like this because this is a play this is a playful bubbly candy cherry candle but it's not too juvenile it's not too like you know this is like you know high c uh high c uh kind of like uh strawberry cherry beverage this is uh much more of a, uh uh has that elegance because of that floral note and i want to make sure that i'm i'm calling it right by saying rose i'm happy with saying rose it might be something else but it has that you know, like how rose can actually smell like fresh leather. It can smell like fresh leather, like a brand new pair of shoes. 
uh, or like like fresh rawhide. But also, rose has an extreme green smell to it, um, and n not just because of the stems. But if you want to think of it that way, this is the stem and the petal. Let's see. Is that correct? Mixed dark fruits, jasmine, rose, vetiver. Yes. White musk, lang lang, nailed it. Well, I don't know if I nailed it, Leslie. That's really pretty. White musk is uh, one of my uh, favorites. Uh, lang lang is never used, and that just... Lang Lang, if you, if you don't know what it's, Lang Lang smells like, it's a floral. If you don't know what it smells like, you gotta just smell the essential oil. Go to your, your essential oil shop and smell it. In my opinion, it smells like nothing else. And it's a great way to add something exotic to a candle and also throw people way off guard. And when they smell it, be like, ah, what is that? Uh, because truly, it smells like nothing else. Uh, but it's in check here because I didn't even pick it up and now that you're mentioning it. I get it. I get it. It adds to that kind of um, You know, it's uh, you know, like imagine sitting down Okay, uh, I mean I, I, call me silly if you want but imagine sitting down with this vampirist right and she's you know She's putting on her makeup to go out for some nocturnal feeding for some blood and this to smell all of her toiletries next to her, the, the, the flowers, the florals, the powder, that Lang Lang is just a, all the exotic, maybe, um, um, f you know, fragrances that she's putting on or the smell of her clothing or just the, the natural vamp vampirous smell that she's exuding. Am I trying to milk this? Well. I'm not mil I don't think I'm milking it. It's all there. Whether I'm, I'm, I'm doing a good job of painting a portrait is another thing. Um, I like it. And there's something in there. And trust me, this is not a bad thing. And I, I use this word all the time. Or I used to use this word all the time in doing wine evaluations. Uh, funkiness. Funkiness is not bad. If funkiness was bad, we wouldn't like the smell of most flowers. Uh, we wouldn't like the smell of mushrooms. We wouldn't like the smell of soil. Uh, s some funkiness is good. It's something that's, um, it just, it's not something that we, we get in home fragrance all the time. But what this does is, is it adds to the ambiance of the candle. I don't know what's attributing to that. It's probably the pungent nature of one of the florals, and I like it a lot. Um, once bitten, you know, I'll be honest, um, you know, the whole blood vamp, well, not, va I like vampire themes, but the blood theme candles, not always my cup of tea, you know, but this one, this probably, one of my favorites, if not my favorite so far. But let's keep this going. Twisted. And I, I again, I am going to apologize for the lagging, folks. Really nothing I could do at this point. Um, let's just hope when this uploads, we won't get this lagging. But check this out. Now, I'd be lying if I said I could get into that pose. I certainly could not. Can anybody do that? Like, is that a real thing? Like, does that have a yoga name? This, this position? Um, she's kind of folded in on herself. She is twisted. Uh, and she's also very naked. And she's uh, in a, a dark forest. There is a skull next to her. So I don't know what she's up to, uh, this young woman. Um, she might need some help. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, this is uh, that's a very provocative, provocative uh, sexy and twisted and disturbing uh, pose, label, and uh, the setting just adds to it. Again, these skulls have 
these really intricate designs. She's definitely up to some kind of witchcraft. And look at the, we have some layering going on there. Look at that, it kind of looks like a cocktail. Is this, I have a feeling if you put a black light on this, this would be phosphorescent. Am I, am I right about that, Leslie, or have you not tried it? We could try putting it out, out the window to see what that happens, but let me give it a smell first. Oh, yes. Uh, lemon verbena. Um, big, big um, candy fire. Okay, so take um, like a Serrano lemon. Let's take the zest. Let's put it outside. Let it, let it dehydrate, right? Let those oils kind of... Uh, really uh, start to penetrate the solids of that zest while also letting uh, the, the, the pith dry out. And then now when you have this sun-dried uh, uh, lemon zest, let's just coat that in uh, like melted, melted sugar. Um, uh, not caramel, but just like coat it with, sh you know, crystallized sugar, cane sugar, whatever it may be. This is a really sweet lemons. Oh, wow, that is pretty. Um, and I, I get silly, I get silly, but whenever I smell lemon verbena, the actual herb, lemon verbena, it, it, and if you haven't done this, you have to try it. When you smell it, it smells like Trick's breakfast cereal, the, the lemon, pellets or whatever they are. I don't know what shapes they come in these days, but the lemon flavored tricks, it, or even Fruit Loops, that's what lemon verbena smells like. Um, and this has got like more lemon. This is like, you know, it's border, it's, it's like borderline, um, like lemon Italian ice. I'm getting some of that tart juiciness and, um, uh, like a like a lemon granita or a lemon uh, uh, Italian ice frozen dessert, but don't forget about that zest. This is not a lemonade. How am I doing, Leslie? Are you kidding me? Top layers is Fruit Loops. And in this version, the bottom layer is for, is forbidden fruit. Next version will be Fruit Loops and Cotton Candy. Are you kidding me? Oh, there's two different... I get it. I get it. Okay, so it's not just the color of the wax. There are two... There are two different aromas. So, without question, um, I, I hope you guys don't think that I did that. Um like I cheated in some way. Um, uh, but definitely that, I would say Fruit Loop. I, I would say uh, uh, Trick cereal. But at the same time, I do think it's uh, just smelling this cold. It's a little bit more pretty than that. Uh, it's not as, as not as sweet and not as simplistic. Like I said, I think the lemon, now that I'm smelling it, okay, now there's probably be some, I'm guessing some cherry in there as well. Really cool. I can't smell the bottom. What is the bottom? Forbidden fruit. So we got two scents mixed together. Um, twisted. So I get the concept. Two layers, two fragrances twisted together. Short intermission for a sip of coffee. Um, all right, let's do this. Next candle on the list. Fairies at play. 
Look at that. You know, I'll be honest. I've, you know, growing up, I was really not into fantasy. Uh, like fantasy, like fairies and unicorns and, and, uh, um, Eve, I'll be honest, like, even as a kid, I was not even, like, a fan of, um, L uh, Lord of the Rings. I never read any, uh, Tolkien's work until I was in college, but as I'm getting older, like, I just, I love, I don't know if it's, like, um, I just like the idea of, like, garden fairies and, and, and building my own garden, um, or spending more time outdoors than I did as a child. But, uh, or if you've ever been to Pixie Hollow in Disneyland, Tinkerbell, uh, really cool to kind of immerse yourself into that world. Everything is built, uh, to scale. So when you walk into Pixie Hollow, Tinkerbell's l land, uh, you are the size of Tinkerbell. So all the flowers are big, all the trees are enormous. Let's give this a sniff. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. Um, honeysuckle, lily, or lily or gar gardenia. Let's see. I know there's a big difference, but cut me a break, guys. <laughs> Jasmine? And I'm getting, uh, you know, those really nice, soft green smells of the spring. Um, you know, not like your face right up into dandelions or fresh cut grass or anything, but more of just enjoying the aroma from a distance or enjoying the aroma as a gust of wind passes by. And once again, if I knew, if I knew the fragrance notes to some very popular perfumes and colognes, I'd be able to give more descriptors in here. This smells, I just, I could probably name a couple, I'm not going to guess because I don't want to be wrong, but I could probably name a couple perfumes that this smells like, or I mean a part of it, a, an ingredient but I don't know what it is in the perfume that smells that way. But as far as a concept goes, absolutely. Um, anything from springtime to um, um, you know, um, what was I gonna say? Springtime, um, lost that thought there was something else I wanted to say but uh, it just reminds me of that time of year you know baseball season starting when, you know again I always go back to my childhood but Little League starting the everything is getting greener everything is becoming more fertile and uh, oh you know what I was gonna say I was gonna say springtime even St. Patrick's Day uh, this would kind of work because it has that really nice green floral combination and what's going to be good about that, if you want like a nice spring candle, is that this is not really that sneezy. You know, this is not, this is, I'm, I'm, it's very difficult for me to burn uh, heavy duty florals. I think I could burn this without a problem. And it does have like a lotion rich aroma, like some, uh, you know, like a, a, like a hand lotion which I guess we could classify that as floral. We could classify that as white musk. I'm not really sure. I want to see, do we have a... Fairies that play lemon peel, night blossom, uh, uh, excuse me, blooming jasmine, fresh cassis and clover. Yeah, cassis. That is that is that is going to be a hard one. Cassis is uh, essentially black currant, right? So it's a dark black fruit, 
And um, one of the hardest things to do is, uh, and I learned this again from evaluating wine, is when you have a color that throws you off, you just, it's hard. For, I mean, imagine trying to imagine, you know, tr try to imagine smelling this and picking up on a black currant or cassis or blackberry or boysenberry or something like that. But that's, I, I, I suppose that's what's attributing to the sweet, sweet factor of this candle. Fairies at play, conceptually really pleasant, really pleasant. Um, if you are, uh, if you like Tinkerbell, you like fairies or you like that world of fantasy, um, um, this will definitely set the tone. And if you're like having a, a Lord of the Rings marathon, uh, or, or if you're watching, um, what are some other good ones? Labyrinth or uh, Legend, uh, you know, if any of these fantasy films, maybe pop this one on. Or pop this one on. Light this one up, is what I'm trying to say. All right, we got one more full candle, and then I'm going to take a. I'm going to go through the milk cups. We're doing okay on time. Devil's Tree. A nice, gnarly, twisted tree with a sunset or sunrise behind. We have uh, that sun glaring off the water on the horizon. Nice, puffy, cumulus nimbus, I believe. <laughs> puffy pink clouds against a pastel blue sky. Devil's Tree, a part of the Legends Collection. What is the legend of the Devil's Tree? And that is, it, that looks like an island. It's not just a horizon. Let's give this a smell. Ooh. Wow, that's nice. Mulchy, mossy, earthy saturated bark you know when you have um a dead tree that um is just covered in that uh teal and green moss uh maybe even spanish moss you know the spanish moss that kind of looks like this stuff that hangs from the trees um but the wetness is key uh wet bark uh, it makes it so much more fragrant, of course, when you add water to something. I did a video a long time ago with my sister-in-law where we went out to Malibu and we just smelled everything. We smelled uh, vegetation on the roadside. We smelled the, the breeze, the coast, the sand. We smelled everything. And then it rained. And then we compared the smells to everything we had smelled prior, but only post uh, like sun sh or, uh, or like rain showers, and everything smelled far different. Everything was more fragrant, and uh, not just more fragrant, but smelled different. So to me, this is yes, this is that gnarly tree, that devil's tree, but definitely after a good amount of rain. And you know, I don't know if you've ever done this. When I was a kid, you know, I I, I was. I played in the dirt as a kid. I like to get my hands dirty when I was a kid. I still do. But, you know, when you're you're digging a hole, you know, or something, or you're, um, you know, putting a post in the ground. I used to have to put posts in the ground for my dad's garden and his fences. And you'd be digging through this clay-rich soil. And you would just, you would be digging it every second. You would hit a root, and you'd be like, ah. Oh. And you knew this root was going to take you forever to get through because he had to cut it and he had to rip it out. Uh, but that 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 smell, that aromatic experience of digging through that clay, that clay rich soil, but also pulling out those root systems. This really is putting 
my nose deep into that uh, tree situation, into that soil situation, into that ground situation. And look, let's just get this out in the open. If you do not think that is a pleasant smell, or, or better yet, if you think, why would you want a candle that smells like that? Because that smells amazing. Think about it. That smell is amazing. Is this a candle that, you know, you're going to burn for your guests for like a Christmas party? No. But this is going to be a candle that's going to set the tone when you're home by yourself or your significant other with your significant other. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're going to pair this with a movie. You're going to pair this with a music album. We could pair this with uh, so many great uh, pieces of music or film. Uh, or if you just uh, really want that, you want to bring the outside inside. Um, uh, this is just a perfect way to do it. This is a real. Uh, I, I'm 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 gonna make my judgment. I usually don't pick favorites, but this one right here is. It's not that I think it's the best. I think for me, this is something that really excites me, and when. Uh, I just when I when I tell people I want them to go outside their comfort zone. If this is not something you think that you would burn, better better reason to to, to get your hands on it. This is the only way you're ever going to open the doors to expand um, uh, your your uh, your aromatic horizons. Uh, this is this is this is different. This is not home fragrance. This is not going to be for sale at Kohl's. Uh, this is not going to be on sale at Macy's, right? This is going to be for those who really take a candle burning um, to a level where uh, they're, they're classifying it as an art form, which I do, which Leslie does as well, which I'm assuming most of you do as well. That's a great Halloween candle. That's a great any time of the year candle, if you ask me. Uh, I would just as soon burn that in the summer as I would right now. Um, and I just want to know, Devil's Trees, Oak Moss, Cedarwood, Garden Dirt. Yeah, I like it. Very, very nicely done. Let's let's keep this going. We have a werewolf now. Werewolf is a part of Leslie's. Is it is it the the Halloween collection? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I don't know if all of these are in stock. I also do remember Leslie making. If it wasn't called Werewolf, it was called something similar. So I wonder if this is different, a different recipe. Wow. So monstrously. I, I'm, I really I need to start looking for different adjectives for musk when I'm talking about uh, candles that are as complex as these. Um, but this is, you know, wolf concepts, uh, like Halloween concepts. There's not many of them, but there's several out there. Um, some of you guys probably know what I'm referring to. Um, there's always what, what I think is interesting about them is that there's these this beastly masculine musky quality that really does provokes the idea of like actually smelling the coat of the the werewolf um, or the wolf the uh, the the dog itself um, not literally but you know. Uh, poetically but with that said as musky and masculine as that is 
this is still a very pretty feminine fragrance where I would imagine that a whole lot of you ladies out there would wear this as a perfume if you could get your hands on it. There is a berry fruit brightness compared, you know, with, in, 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 you know, juxtaposed with that, that, that musky, floral musk. It's a powdery floral musk. I think powdery is something that needs to be said. As far as the florals are concerned, what am I going to say? I don't know. There is there is a, 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 a really rich sweetness to it. Can I say honey? Or maybe it's like a honeysuckle floral aroma? And now I'm just becoming desensitized because I, I really can't smell for that long. But this is a this is a pretty powerful like I, I, again it, it's it smells mystical it smells magical it smells like you know it, it has that you know the wolfman and the talisman the 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 gypsy woman the the you know uh. It, 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 you know, love potion number nine kind of thing. It has this mystical, magical quality to it. It just provokes those those images and settings in my mind. If we wanted to burn, if you know, let's say if they were burning this um, in uh, like a, like a, a kind of a new age boutique store or like a boutique clothing like a very specific kind of boutique clothing store uh, this makes a statement this aroma it's elegant it's powerful it's intense uh, and it rides that line of masculine or feminine or let me dare say this like a very um, 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 pro very uh, 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 profound uh, 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 feminine uh, fragrance uh, aroma like perfume wise like this isn't subtle right what is in this thing Leslie she's probably already listed it that's that's really pretty witches Is it, it again? It's spelled a little. It's. I should be able to decipher. Which is, familiar or familiar, and if it's familiar, I don't know. I, I'm kind of self-conscious because I don't know what familiar means. But that's not a bad thing. And it's kind of has this. I don't know if can you tell. It has this like glow in the dark. Tint to it, like. Uh, just like off, off white, not off, well, off white in a green. Whew. All right, cedar, cinnamon. <sighs> cinnamon. something really sweet cinnamon cedar honey did you say witch's companion There's something else in here. What is in this? Let's say, or maybe I'll scroll up. Um, 
Werewolf is sold out. She's saying Devil's Tree. I got the Devil's Tree. Werewolf is Bonfire, Autumn Leaves, and Musk. So Autumn Leaves. Um, that's a, a, a very interesting topic to talk about because what is the smell of autumn leaves? We all know what wet leaves smell like, right? But like um, in a poetic sense, you know, like if I... Wow, how many times does that happen when it's right there? Like if I pulled out Yankee Candles autumn leaves, this, is, this does not smell like a pile of wet leaves. I mean, this smells like pine. This smells like citrus. This smells like florals. Smells like tree sap. Um, so, I don't know. There's something sweet in this 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 witch this witch one. A uh, cinnamon, cedar, and then what what is in there like a creamy creamy sweet somebody list it blend it like brian um says leaves usually has a juniper berry yes juniper berry um is one of those descriptors that's always left out of coniferous trees uh, and if any of you folks out there are uh, gin fans like the spirit gin uh, gin is probably the number two most popular ingredient used in distilling gins so um, if you're unfamiliar with the smell it's a, a big bright uh, form of pine aroma uh, this one is really uh, nice for the autumn if you want your baking spice that combination of cedar and cinnamon is something I really enjoy. I only can think of one time it's happened with, let's say, Yankee Candle. It was just called Cedar and Cinnamon, but I don't think it ever made its way to the U.S. But there's more going on in here. But for the sake of time, I have to keep going. We have one more. We have The Raven. Uh, and I'm assuming this is in reference to Edgar Allan Poe's. Uh, let's see if I can quote, can I get it, quote, the raven. Um, uh, and my soul from out this shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. I could probably do a little bit more than that. My nose is just, it's shot. It's shot. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the eleventh candle I'm going to here. That's another nice, like, parlor scent. Um, and yes, I am using the story or the poem, The Raven, to put me in that setting of the sitting room. S little bit of the cedar wood, uh, uh, smoky hearth, uh, smoky fireplace. Maybe uh, some tobacco, like a, a tobacco pipe tobacco. Maybe. Again, I'm getting the scent of a little bit of masculinity or uh, some form of like cashmere or clean linen. And I'm not smelling this, but this is how, you know, you have to remember how your mind can do this sometimes. 
Something I just thought I smelt, but I didn't, was uh, beeswax. Uh, if beeswax has a very, um, uh, uh, very specific smell, and I don't smell in here. So if any of you guys don't like the smell of beeswax, don't be afraid. But your mind can fill in the empty spaces for you. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, one of the topics I really like to talk about candles, you know, instead of like trying to get everything you want into a candle, you know, let, let uh, the candle be a game of the connect the dots. You know, sometimes the right combinations will get you, like the smell of charcoal and cedar wood, charcoal and cedar wood, not burn charcoal, not burn cedar wood, can provoke the idea of smoke. It can put the idea of smoke in someone's brain. So that's a great way for a candle maker to, to, to utilize smoke without actually having to put a smoke fragrance into the mixology of, of the candle. I don't know, maybe I do get a little bit of that, that warm beeswax smell. Which is nice because, you know, you would imagine, you know, at, a, at an old desk or in a library or a cigar lounge or parlor in some old house or mansion, you would imagine like a big pillar candle of beeswax burning. This would be great uh, for something. When we're talking about movies and pairing it with things, I mean, we can burn this with Dracula. We can burn this with any of the Hammer Horror Studios films. Uh, we could burn this with something like even, uh, I know Game of Thrones is over, but this would have been a great one for Game of Thrones. Um, you know, it provokes uh, both indoor and uh uh, outdoor. Well, it doesn't provoke outdoor aromas, but it, it'll keep you figuratively. It'll keep you warm uh, during all of those cold, wintry scenes of Game of Thrones. I want to give a huge loving thank you to Leslie Pethybridge, a uh, dear friend and supporter of the Candle Enthusiast. Many of you guys have been with me from the very beginning, but uh, Leslie uh, has been with me just about from day one, if not day one, and uh, she has, uh, I just want to make sure that Leslie, that you know, and that all of you guys know who, who, who give your support, that uh, it's uh, it just uh, having you guys along uh, with me uh, through all this time. I never take it for granted. I never will. It's just such a blessing, and it's made this experience so much more rewarding than I ever thought it would. In fact, if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for the audience, if it wasn't for the people who truly care and, and show their faces and um, you know check in and, and s follow what I'm doing and understand that you know, um, um, especially since this past year, I've been uh, absent. And, uh, you know, instead of, instead of uh, disappearing, kind of just uh, showing uh, f forgiveness, and, and, and uh, it, it really has made the experience great. I probably would have given it up a long time ago without you guys. And with that said, for me to, to, to maybe, just maybe be a small reason for Leslie um, uh, you know, uh, putting her, st uh, you know, taking that, taking the initiative uh, and starting her own candle company. If I, even if I had a morsel uh, to do with this process, it just makes me incredibly happy and proud. Uh, um, and uh, I just never thought I would be able to have this kind of impact. Um, um, so, however, however big or small, uh, uh, the influence I've had on uh, these candle companies. It, uh, it truly, truly makes me so happy. And to see the quality and to see, I know Leslie's gone through uh, a lot of trial and error, 
uh, but to see the the killer quality of all these candles uh, she's definitely she hasn't given up uh, she takes her passion seriously she takes the art form seriously and she's making solid candles now so it's just a, a testament that if you have the passion and if you have the willpower you have the drive you want to live that dream and you want to do something uh, even if other people are telling you that sounds silly if you stick with it you can do it and uh, this is uh, perfect proof what, 12 11 candles in front of me so a huge huge like I said loving thank you to Leslie uh, a round of applause and please uh, do yourself a favor check out uh, Leslie's Etsy page uh, link is in the description below see what she's got available left for this season and uh, just make sure you follow her on Instagram see what she's up to keep, you know keep in touch um, and uh, I'm sure she'll have uh, plenty of, of uh, returning products and new products to share with all of us uh, in the near future. We're going to try to do an after show. Uh, we're going to try to do this after show. Give me about 10 minutes. And uh, if uh, as long as it's not lagging, we'll continue with the after show. I have a lot, a lot of stuff, fun stuff to do uh, for this after show. So let's hope it doesn't lag. Um, but uh, meet me back here on the same channel in about 10 minutes, and we'll go for round number two. Thanks again for everyone for joining, and thanks again for Silver Moon Candle Company. We'll see you guys next time. And the uncomfortable moment now when I realize I have to find the end button. See you soon.